we had so many ideas, but we, we had this mind, always this mindset. Every time we'd go to a place, we always had thoughts like, we could do this better, the service could be better, the setup could be better, the product could be better. So after we kind of swatted out multiple ideas, we came back to, oh my God, I hated my safety shoes my whole life. Like, how is it possible that there's nothing better on the market? And then I decided to do a bit more research um, and talk to different engineers and coworkers here in the US and in Germany and everyone was saying, like, <gasps> I hate my safety shoes. Welcome to Collaborative with Spencer Krauss. This is a place for accomplished professionals to talk about their life and their work in an informal and hopefully an insightful way. If you like what you see, hit subscribe below. Enjoy the show. Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Anna Kraft. Uh, she's the CEO of Xena Workwear. Um, we already had their COO on. Xena is the first company to market with a work a boot that you'd actually want to wear available for women. Really, really cool stuff. Anna, welcome to the pod. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me today, Spence. Awesome. I'm excited to share the story and dive, dive into more exciting things about running a company. Sweet. Yeah. Excited to hear your perspective on it. So yeah, you guys have been killing it lately, by the way. It's, uh, it's just really fun to kind of see the, uh, the growth of Xena and, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, to quote Dimitri, it's one of those things you don't feel like a douchebag supporting. <laughs> <laughs> no. And you know, sometimes from the outside, it looks like we're bigger than we actually are because people see some of the ads or they see some of the posts on LinkedIn or now it's TikTok, Instagram, <laughs> and we seem to be huge. <laughs> In reality, we're a small company. We have, uh, we just hired our fourth team member. That's awesome. Uh, Your fourth full time. Three, three full time. Mm -hmm. Fourth full time team member. In June, so try to run lean operations, and all of us are wearing different hats depending on the day. Yeah, that's great. I was looking you guys up the other day, uh, just when I was posting uh, Dimitri's content, and. Um, I remember seeing uh, just tons of good reviews about your product. Like it was really cool. Uh, it's got to be rewarding. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe for for those people who um, have not seen the previous podcast, I'll sure. share super briefly what we actually do because <laughs> uh, not not everyone understands what work boots actually are. So we started a company called Zena Workwear, uh, where we focus primarily on safety shoes for women steel toed boots that have a protective steel toe cap built, built in, a slip resisting outsole. Um, we have additional safety features like electric hazard resistance. So all that. Wait, you do electrical energy. hazard resistant ones now? Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Like we, we were, we launched with kind of this first boot nice. in 2019. Can you hold that a little higher um, just because of the framing setup? Oh, yeah. yeah thanks. Perfect. <laughs> so that, that's designed for as a walkthrough boot for engineers or someone who spends a lot of time in an office and then once in a while has to go out on the shop floor. I basically designed it for myself because nice. I was in manufacturing for many years and had to dress professionally in important meetings. And then when I had to run out to the shop floor, I had to put on my clunky, heavy, <laughs> terrible safety shoes <laughs> that I hated so bad. much. <laughs> so that basically drove me to start a company focusing on. That's awesome. And just, because I don't fully understand it. Like how heavy of a thing can fall on your foot and not crush it when you're wearing those things? Yeah, the, um, there's specific testing they have to go through and there are different standards in the US. They're called ASTM 2413. In Canada, you have C um, CSA. In Europe, you have ISO. Cool. So depending on the country you're in, the, the testing standards is slightly different. Um, so the one part of the test is the compression test where the machine slowly compresses the toe cap and it doesn't have to be steel. It could be composite. It could be carbon fiber, aluminum. There are so many cool materials out there now. Nice. Right now we're researching a new material to have another option to seal. And the second test it goes through is it drops a weight from it. I would have to look up the standard from what specific height. Yeah, it's all good. So, yeah. I had a bunch of those and forgotten the heights as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
lately I've been looking into CFA standards, so just sort of trying to learn more about those uh, I guess, we have now. So maybe a maybe a better way to frame the question that, that would get at it is like what kind of an action is this gonna save someone for in the sh from the shop? Like you know, what kind of stuff is this gonna prevent, you know? You know, a good example is I worked um in different machine um metal fabrication facilities. So when you're working around a machine and you have constantly pieces that you are lifting, maybe you're inspecting them depending on the job that you're in. So you could be dropping a metal piece. You could be, if you're in warehousing, could be dropping a box um, or something could actually roll over your foot when you're like moving, <laughs> moving like things a forklift? around. Um, I think you should be able to withstand a forklift. You should not be near a forklift. <laughs> but like carts with weights that you're kind of. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And you know, that's, that's actually a good question because most safety shoes require only a seal toe cap and only a few facilities uh, re require metatarsal protection, which has an emet guard built in. We do have a MedGuard model that I'll find. So it's basically, cool. it does not protect only the toe area, which kind of is towards only the front portion. Um, their met metatarsal bone guard. I've always wondered what that protection. actually meant. This is awesome. <laughs> I appreciate it. You have external med guards <laughs> and internal. So we have a model with an internal med guard. So nice. I would imagine I way better looking. Too. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was challenging to find something you use. An, open uh, open cell foam material that hardens during impact so, it, so the cool. challenging thing is to make it flexible enough when you're walking but then um making sure it's uh, safe enough when in case something drops so does that mean you're only getting one out of that and then it's like a bike helmet you gotta replace it i, I assume yeah if something drops on it you should probably replace it that makes sense to me <laughs> actually that's a good question you know i should be writing writing this down with helmets, yeah, we did a motorcycle class this year, and I wanted to buy some because riding gear is so expensive. I wanted, I was fine to buy a used like leather jacket, and nice, like some gear. And That's awesome. You got into that. Very by the way. important. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you. I've been wanting to myself. So Finally, give me a little punch in the guts. Oh my god, yeah, we still haven't bought a motorcycle because we never had time. It's actually Did there. You guys... Sorry, but, I'll but tell you, I'll ask you offline. <laughs> But it's so important to get a new helmet. You should not buy a used one because you don't know if, if it, someone dropped it before, if somebody had an accident and they have a shelf life. So in order to make sure that you're fully protected, you should always buy a new helmet. Makes sense to me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, probably needed to hear that. <laughs> Guess I will be buying my gear soon. <laughs> I've been, um, Ooh, I've been really wanting to do a trip to yeah. Southeast Asia. I'll just tell you since we're talking. I, I've been really wanting to do a trip yeah. to Southeast Asia. And I feel like that'll be so much more fun if I know how to drive a motorcycle before I do it. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. Vietnam, I'm, Laos. I'm convinced it will be more fun. Dimitri and I were in Cambodia. Oh. Fucking... And before we started the business, oh, we nice. decided to go on this one-month trip to Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand. And one of the... One of the parts was we rented a scooter, <laughs> <laughs> and we thought it would have been way more fun on a motorcycle. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. but it was still fun. But I'm gonna it have to rent a scooter if I don't learn how to ride a motorcycle fast. <laughs> yeah, start with a scooter, start slow. Yeah, I gotta get my M permit, then uh, then my motorcycle license. Do they have the motorcycle safety course out by you guys? Um, yeah, nice. so we live in Milwaukee, Thank you. Uh, where you have Harley Davidson, and we did the class. Of course. Through the Harley Davidson uh, Academy. They were amazing instructors, recommended to everyone out there. That's awesome. We're not, we don't have the budget for a Harley bike yet. <laughs> but expensive. We it's a Harley <laughs> class. <laughs> yeah, they're pricey. Yeah. Good quality, though. I heard they were making some moves. I don't know what they've, what they've done lately at market, but I, I heard they had like some kind of a new line coming out that was meant to be some. Oh some my other God, game they changer. have this the pan american um it's their first kind of adventure style bike uh which looks amazing so i i want a motorcycle that i can that is safe enough or comfortable enough for the road but nice also sense. can handle off-roading nice um so and the the new harley davidson bike can do that 
That's awesome. Our uh, our head of software has a BMW bike that's really really pretty. <laughs> I'm jealous of it. Jealous, yeah. yeah. It's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> So that's actually a good segue. Like, um, you lived in Germany before you came over here, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I guess how long was that for? What were like some of the differences in business culture you saw? I just, I don't yeah. know. I'd never really talked to you about that much. I'd be interested to hear about it. Yeah. Uh, the, the short answer where I'm from is always Germany. The longer is I was born in Kazakhstan. And when I was 10, my, my family decided to move to Germany because my dad had German roots. So I cool. speak Russian because Kazakhstan used to be part of the Soviet Union. Yeah. So I went there to school, finished three grades, and then moved to Germany. That's awesome. And uh, Difficult age to move, yeah. though. I mean, I... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 10, 10 was fine, and I picked up German super quickly. And it was kind of interesting to see the change in culture. Um, Kazakhstan, like living in Kazakhstan really impacted that as a person because I saw that women did not have exactly the same rights or and opportunities as men. Unfortunately. So coming to Germany, I saw like, oh my God, women like Angela Merkel as nice. popular yeah. women in management positions. <laughs> so I'm like, and I really wanted to have a job where I could be financially independent and would be able to do cool stuff and impact, have a positive impact in the world. At that time, I was so fascinated with renewable technologies. Yeah. Um, and decided to go into engineering. That's awesome. So through that program, I came to the U.S. Um, the program I studied is called International Project Engineering. Cool. It combines different engineering subjects with project management, a couple languages, some finance. So well, you got language rolled right into the program that you, you studied? So this was an undergrad thing or a grad school? or? Yeah, it was undergrad. It was cool. a bachelor's degree. That's awesome. Yeah. And so I always took English already since fifth grade, but during that program, I took Spanish. My, my Spanish is decent, <laughs> not as good as... <laughs> the fact that you picked it up in undergrad and you can speak it enough to do business is incredible to me. I mean, I took, I don't know how many years of French and I can barely get by when I'm in <laughs> French-speaking countries. <laughs> you know, it, uh, it will come back if you really need to use it. <laughs> That's, that's what, what I've noticed, noticed is yeah, it seems, seems like, like when you're, there. that's, that's it, right? right? Like, like when you're, when you're somewhere where people are speaking a language, language, like, I feel like after a few days, like, it just kind of like, you got it, it's a sink or swim, swim, right? So for me, um, like I went to Spain recently and, um, my Spanish is atrocious. Like I took Spain in kindergarten as an American and our, you know, language programs aren't great here, unfortunately, but I mean, yeah, a lot of it, I think it's just the lack of proximity to places where people speak the other language. So I, I think, like mm -hmm. you said, I mean, if you go there, you know, and it's, I mean, Europe, everything's like right, you know, right over there. So, you know, it's, it's like a different thing. Yeah. You have Mexico here. We do, but <laughs> I, I grew up, I grew up in New York. You know? <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's way yeah, over true. here. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And uh, New York and no, Pennsylvania. I... So. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. After Very Europe. cool. Yeah, I, I love I love Spain. Um, where, where in Spain did you go? Uh, so I, I flew to Madrid for a conference, and then um, mm -hmm. I didn't realize the streets were so medieval there. So I ended up getting basically just boxed in by a bunch of trucks unloading at like 10 a.m. the next day. So I just oh didn't understand God. Spanish culture or city structure at the time. <laughs> And so I missed my oh. flight, and then it was it was awesome. I, I got to spend like another three days because I. I I intentionally just like booked a flight a few days out because I was I just wanted to check out the country more, mm -hmm. and so I, oh, I got a smart car awesome. and I drove it to Valencia, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, it was really fun. I had a great time. I love it. Yeah, although I'm from Germany, Spain is my favorite country in Europe. I love yeah, it so much. I would say Belgium is probably mine. Uh, but I don't know. It might just be I had really good experiences when I was there, <laughs> but. What do you like about Belgium? I just, uh, when I went there, it was, like, everybody was pretty friendly. Um, and then I just, I saw what I remember as the best jazz show I ever saw. It probably wasn't, like, in terms of technical talent or anything like that. But um, I, I stayed in Airbnb. It was a piano factory um, basement in Brussels. And then, because it's a bunch of musicians, everybody knew where good music was. So, um, I, yeah, I took a bunch of, um, like trains and stuff or it was bus. I can't remember really, like buses, trains, whatever, but I took public transit over to, um, like the conservate, this little jazz bar by the conservatory. And there were these students that were playing. There was a dude on the flute that was just like a rock star. Like he was so good at it. 
and, and there's this female vocalist. She was fucking incredible. She did a hip hop verse at one point, like while the guy was mm-hmm. like ripping on the flute, and then he would take the flute and like strut across the stage like his Mick Jagger. Like it was so cool. And then there were like two other band members that were not as memorable, but like those two just just made it for me. Like it was it was really mm-hmm. really fun. Mm-hmm. And then I, I'm not even a cigarette smoker, but I, I like got a cigarette off of some Belgian person just so I could talk to the band members while they were smoking. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually one thing i don't miss from europe everyone smokes and everything smells like smoke so yeah that's i'll coffee. be honest yeah, it's that's a not different culture it's not my favorite either it's, it's one of those things where i will do it in order to start a conversation but i don't enjoy mm-hmm. it and i think it's disgusting and gross <laughs> <laughs> don't pick up that habit <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i'm sort of fortunate in that sense like i i can have like probably like I think the most of have probably done is like eight cigarettes in one night, just drinking and trying to talk to people. But the next day, I just don't want one. Like, I don't know. Lucky. Mm-hmm. That's good. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah. So, um, I guess just to kind of rein it back in, um, what are some of the, uh, the things you went through kind of when you started Xena and, um, stuff you had to figure out as a business owner and, and as a, as an executive that, you know, kind of, um, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, I, I'm interested yeah. in lessons yeah. learned. I believe we're all human. And yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, first of all, speaking of the, of my experience, um, but my experience in Germany versus the U S I think oh, sorry, I need to, some more. Let's hear that no, more. no, no. I, like, I, I thought like, how do we bring it back to what you actually <laughs> asked me a while ago? Um, I think, the U.S. Is such, has a, such a good environment for the startup culture. I was just blown away when kind of we we wanted to start a business, but we decided to give ourselves a full year to figure out if we wanted to stay in the corporate world. And then I would have done my master's in engineering because the first program was so broad. I wanted to dive in into a specific area. Um, and cool. my husband, Dimitri, would have done his MBA. He already picked up a couple cool schools nice called universities across the u.s but then by the end of that year we uh, decided to kind of brainstorm different ideas went up north booked a cabin swatted out the ideas that's <laughs> awesome you mentioned you know, that the fact that you guys actually did a swat <laughs> so um, what is it strengths weaknesses opportunities know, threats yeah, it's probably not even the right way to evaluate a business opportunity <laughs> when we had to do something because we kept pushing out. We had so many ideas, so we, we had this mind, always this mindset. Every time we'd go to a place, we always had thoughts like we could do this better, the service could be better, the setup could be better, the product could be better. So after we kind of swatted out multiple ideas, we came back to, oh my God, I hate it my safety shoes my whole life like how is it possible that there's nothing better on the market and then i decided to do a bit more research um, and talk to different engineers and co-workers here in the u.s and in germany and everyone was saying like, i hate my safety shoes they suck like, okay there are companies who you know there are companies <clears throat> speaking of figs who just ipo'd i think in may uh, the scrubs company like they did such a killer job they were dealing with a product people did not really care about and transformed it like improved the materials improved the design colors branding and created this amazing product out of it that people liked we're working with a product women not just not really care about they in many cases don't like wearing it they hate safety shoes yeah now we're transitioning into a product they enjoy to wear and what makes me super happy is when women wear the shoes to the office, to the shop floor, job site, and even to a work dinner afterwards or to a meeting with their friends. That's cool. So, or some women have, have them as their everyday boots. So that's awesome. That makes me very happy. But I, I think that's existed in the men's market. Like this isn't something I know a ton about, but I mean, they, they make like decent look, like I think New Balance makes safety shoes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you, you oh, would... there, you know, and then, for the men's market, there are so many different companies, and we did not even want to compete. It's a much bigger opportunity, but then you're competing with so many different brands. Well, I mean, I'm, what, what you've created was so needed, I think. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you picked that track, that 
that uh that route <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and you know after we um we designed safety shoes women like sent us feedback and said oh my god can you um develop additional safety features like the electric hazard resistance the static dissipator food um and then additional like ppe like vests and pants and that's cool fr clothing we didn't but you guys have vests and pants stuff. now I, I feel like i'm so no, embarrassed not yet. Okay. so we have a whole list of requests or safety classes like there's so much that needs to be improved in the whole market but uh one thing that we designed if you can make a safety vest fun. look good i mean like on any gender yeah i mean you're a champion <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> No, the, the problem is that majority of those PPE products are designed for men. So yeah, but I mean, I, I don't even think a safety vest looks good on a man. I mean, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, unless yeah. you're like making a pop video in the eighties, like, uh. yeah. Yeah. And it's not, not just about the look. That's one aspect of it. The other one is fit. Men and women have differently shaped feet. So we have different shaped sense. torsos. So it's, and the fit is super important for safety, like for comfort and safety. So that's another huge aspect we always evaluate like it's always the number one priority then we look at the design yeah that's yeah. awesome right oh speaking of speaking of um work where we designed more functional blazers blazers wear them on every podcast <laughs> yeah so i basically designed things i wanted to have in working in manufacturing you've got a blazer uh, now? women we do I can you, do I you can have it. Oh, okay yeah, let, let me let me get it. No problem. We have two styles now. Basically, we design things um, that I always wanted to have in manufacturing. <laughs> women's, women's clothing does not have pockets. That's the problem. Yeah. Right now, I'm wearing a pair of jeans that has fake pockets. Uh, that sucks. And, or sometimes you have like these t tiny, <laughs> tiny little <laughs> slots where you can't put anything into. And when I worked in manufacturing, I needed to bring so, so many things me on the shop floor. I needed safety glasses, earbuds, a pen. I needed a spot to put my phone. So you have so much stuff and you don't carry a purse with you around. So yeah. if you have a bunch of fake pockets and have a lot of things to carry, it was always so challenging. Why would the so designers even do that? Like, what, decided, the, what the hell is the point of a fake pocket? Uh, it's it like looks teasing. better. That's the whole point. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So we decided Sorry. to design blazers with actual pockets. Nice. Uh, maybe I can move the camera a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll show some of the features. So we have deep pockets for PPE to external. To nice. External. Um, I will show you some of manufacturing related features. So one thing that is not allowed in many manufacturing facilities is jewelry because it can get caught in machinery. So Makes sense. A swivel clasp. We've all seen those pictures of uh, can... people that left a ring on and then used a lathe. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, nope. dangerous. Correct. So jewelry pocket or just any valuables that you may want to keep. Can you hold it a little bit higher just because we're, we're cropping kind of low here? Okay, cool. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is good. Um, then it has an adjustable, like one of the blazers has this cool adjustable cinch waist, depending on if you want to have a wider fit. Oh, that's or cool. So it's like, that's, that's, does it just get taken up in the back or how does that work? I'm kind of, I love fashion more than i should <laughs> but this is this is fascinating to me okay. i'm really enjoying this okay cool i see that so, that's that's actually that's really neat how you did that and and that's a combination between a utility jacket and a blazer because i wanted to create something that looks helps you look put together in a meeting but it's still function here up in the shop it's almost reminiscent like, of like a like a burberry trench coat like i want to say like it's it's a really good yeah. look <laughs> like Thank you. You're welcome. Um, then it, it has um, a badge loop because you, nice. in most cases, you need a, a badge to get around from one location to the other. A pocket pen. Where's the badge loop? Is that just have... tucked under the lapel? I didn't really get a good look at that. It's... Oh, nice. Okay, so it's not a badge wheel. It doesn't like retract, but it just gives you a spot no, to stash it. No, it's, it so you it's can an just... elastic. You can you can attach your badge to it, so it's always available, or Got you it. can hide it in the pocket. That's cool. And then the other aspect is, um, it was super important to me to make it machine washable because sometimes yeah, you're in a fancy me meeting room, 
and then the next minute you're in a dirty, dusty shop floor or a construction site, so you need neat clothes that you can throw into a washing machine. Nobody has time to go to a dryer or who wants to pay for dry cleaners all the time. I mean, I, I have a service I that picks up the stuff from my place, but it, it gets very expensive and I, I, it's not yeah, financially yeah. responsible. Yeah, and I worked in a well shop, so every time I would walk out, it would be like, <laughs> well dust everywhere <laughs> so you shouldn't wear like your uh any white clothes or because it would get dirty right away yeah i buy that all the sputter so yeah uh we'll see how it will go but so far has that has that been released amazing. yet yeah we launched them our main focus will always be safety shoes but thank sure we'll slowly release more things that women have been asking for that's awesome I mean, can I ask, like, how many units you've sold yet? You obviously don't have to answer that. I'm just curious because, I mean, um, it's a cool blazer. Say, There's nothing like that that exists on internet. Yeah. We're definitely more known for our safety shoes. So our sales are probably 80% shoes, okay. 20% blazers. That ain't bad, though. I mean, the fact that you're 20 yeah. blazers, I mean, that means that people are liking those. Yeah, and like we launched, <laughs> we launched during the worst time ever <laughs> when, <laughs> when everything was shut down. And we're like, oh, our product is finally ready. We found a reliable manufacturer. And everyone's like, now I'm working from home. I don't need your thing right now. <laughs> but sales started to pick up, especially now. Women going back to work. They're nice. excited to go back to in-person meetings, conferences, uh, visiting clients. So, And these blazers are perfect for travel because they're yeah. wrinkle resistant. I kind of wish you made it in men's, to be honest, now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Such a cool blazer. And not not under Zena. And right now, like we, uh, it's all we good. have to keep delivering on our on our promises to all the ladies who are waiting. For I, mean, I completely more. understand, and I mean, I want to see more women in this field, so I can respect that. <laughs> <laughs> I I just uh, I went to the I have a tailor I go to, so I went there like last week, and because I lost all that weight from that diet I went on, uh, I was telling you about off camera. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I just had to have like all my blazers worked on, so I'm just like, ah, oh, it's so expensive. I just wish there was a strap I could adjust. <laughs> it's a, it's a good problem to have. Um, yeah, you were you were doing keto. I did it with Dimitri for a month. Nice. It was challenging. We talked about it, but just because I mean, it's it's I don't know. What were the challenges? Uh, for me, the biggest challenge is bread <laughs> not eating it <laughs> i don't care about chocolates i don't care about cakes oh my so gosh to cut out good bread especially coming from germany where yeah, i'm so used sure. to really nice nice bread for breakfast it's challenging <laughs> one of I my coworkers, came uh, she was in berlin when we had to be and i mean there's just so much good looking stuff around them i was, I was so jealous um but yeah, no, that's, I miss a lot. There's one bakery near where I live that I, I always kind of salivate over when I drive by and then I just don't go in there anymore. But, um, yeah, just don't have it in the house. That's yeah. the solution. It's, it's, it's a Chinese bakery. It's awesome. I mean, they make, they make really, really good stuff. The name is funny. I'm, I don't think it means to be, but it's the pink box bakery. And so, um, hmm. I don't know. They make, they make pretty good pastries, uh, in my personal opinion. But haven't eaten those in a while. Um, you know, miss it, but I'm okay with not having it. For me, it's it's that first three days that's a killer. So the first three days, I'm craving carbs. I want I want bread. I want chocolate. I want mm -hmm. ice cream. I want all of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After three days, I'm like, I can do this. I'm okay. I got this. Yeah, yeah. The the best thing about keto was that you're kind of operating like a machine at some point. Like, you, and so I you got that. Understood why why the military uses the keto diet. I'm not sure if they're still using it, but I didn't know the military did that. That's was, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so on some days it was already 4 PM and I realized that I have not eaten that the whole day and I wasn't even hungry. So you just can operate with, <laughs> without the feeling of hunger on the downside is you're not as excited about food and I'm a huge foodie and yeah. You know, well, so that's my, I mean, I broke my diet today to have this Manhattan, which is the sweetest thing as I told you I've had in a month. And so mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's delicious. I'm really, really enjoying it. But I found like these days if I eat um, something really sweet. So like I'll have like somebody offered me something the other day where I felt like I was going to vomit. And it was something that would have been normal like under any other circumstance. It was like, I'm going to get this wrong, but we'll say it was like um, like a muffin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't need sweets anymore. <laughs> Even though, like a, a piece of carrot starts to taste sweet after a while on yeah, pizza. But the thing sure. is, uh, do you think it's sustainable in the long run? I, I thought that you're missing out on a lot of nutrients. That's what I wonder. Like, so Also, the consumption of, a huge consumption of uh, animal-based products. Like the cholesterol yeah, well, there. it's expensive as heck because of that, right? Because you're, you're eating tons of animals which cost money to store and cultivate and i mean there's other issues there that i'm sure vegans would dispute me at send all hate mail to podcast at sk.solutions <laughs> uh, anyway um yeah you're eating a lot of animal product for sure um i, I actually recently started dating uh, a vegan and it's been very interesting trying to find the intersection of those two diets it's, it's a tiny intersection salads that's, that's the only intersection <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, cucumbers with a little soy sauce um, is, is delicious and we'll eat that together all the time but um, yeah, uh, no, you're absolutely right um, and, and the foodie in me gets kind of like, I, you know, I want to eat a good slice of pizza, Like I mean I miss that a lot I had um, a former business partner sign me up for something called Universal Yums which is um, they send you a box of junk food from a different part of the world every month and so um, the Belgian one came in the month I started this diet. And um, yeah, it's, it's all chips and chocolate, you know? <laughs> so oh I, I gave it to a coworker. Um, but before I did, I was like, I, that chocolate bar looks really good. Can I try like a 16th of that? Said, no, you're giving it to me. I don't care. And so <laughs> I, I ate a 16th of this chocolate bar. It was the first time I did chocolate in like... I want to say a month or two um and i got the smile on my face everybody in the office just was giggling at me because i i think i looked like the kid from like the world war ii movie that like gets chocolate for the first time when they've grown up in a bombed out area mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, I was just like i think it was involuntary i just i got this really wide smile mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So oh my god like, yeah, that's the reason people like this stuff <laughs> anyway well Hang in there. I got it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I, I Obviously, I want to do it. It's a good exercise in stoicism. And, you know, I'm a foodie too. But, you know, there's stuff that's keto that also tastes good. Not the desserts. Those are gross. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, just to rein it in again. Um, so, you've got that blazer, which is slick. Uh, what colors does that come in, if I can ask? Just... Again, this is a little vain. Yeah, um, so this one comes in, it's called the Aurora Utility Blazer, comes in an olive green. Nice. And then we have a second design, which I don't have it here right now. It's okay. Um, comes in a black and a navy blue. That's awesome. And, the, and both of them have different benefits. This one is ultra lightweight and extremely wrinkle resistant. The other one has the it's a little bit heavier, but has the benefit that it's very stretch stretchy and flexible. Do you have to iron that one out of the laundry machine when you say wrinkle resistant, or is it so good that you don't have to do that? No, usually you don't have to do that, uh, depending on how you uh, hang dry it. That's awesome. So, yeah, so it's making it easy for people. I, I was um, a lot of my design is inspired by Yvonne Chouinard's approach the founder of patagonia um basically designing things that are versatile uh, trying to use sustainable fabrics which is a huge challenge trying to make something extremely functional safe and finding sustainable materials but i think the <clears throat> sustainability aspect comes in when you design something that will not get be out of style in a season fast fashion brands who are like chasing the latest fashion trends where you buy a thing and then a season or a year later you have to throw it away because it's not fashionable anymore. Yeah, I hate anymore. that. So I had to design things that that are classics that you can 
you can see as an investment that you will have for many years. And ideally, the goal is not to design a blazer for one environment. Ideally, the products will be so versatile that you can wear that piece to um, to a meeting, to the shop floor, uh, to a happy hour with friends. Or <laughs> so it's basically making things that can go with so many different outfits. How do you? Can I can I ask kind of what the thought process is that goes into that? Because I, I remember like when I was younger, my dad and I would go to the Burberry store in, in Manhattan and just try on stuff we had no intention of buying. It was like fourteen hundred dollar trench coats and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, you couldn't afford that. So it's like you go in and you pretend to be a customer, but really you just want to try on this awesome trench coat. And one of the things I love about Burberry stuff and I uh, plugging them a lot but I, I it's it's a brand I enjoy wearing and it's because it never goes out of style you can have a Burberry mm -hmm. coat from you know the 70s that still looks great today mm -hmm. and um, yeah I always wondered how the hell do you do that like what is what's the thought process that goes into I making think something a lot of timeless? it is in simplicity they're they're different silhouettes that have been that are considered classics and will just not be out of style. Like right now, the puffy sleeves are in, but they, they will they will come and they will go. <laughs> um, or the latest <laughs> crazy trend is like extremely long sleeves. So I'm like, okay, it's not very functional. Wait, like it where it's like falling over your wrist and crap? Yeah, yeah. It's not. Um, in so fact, that, that would be a hazard in a shop because that would get sucked into oh, a machine. Oh, definitely. It, 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 it doesn't work for us for so many reasons, but um, working with very simple, clean lines um, and designs, same goes for our shoes. They don't have anything extra on them, trying to overload the design, just, just keeping it classic, simple, using high quality materials, and then allowing women to dress the products up or down, depending on the environment that they need them for. It's awesome. I, re I really like that a lot. Definitely. I, I mean, yeah, I, I've... Um, and I'm still learning. I, I'm someone who actually does not enjoy shopping. It's shocking. I have a workwear company and I <laughs> hate shopping. So I use different platforms, comparable uh, Stitch Fix and a few others where you. What's Stitch Fix? Sell it. I'm sorry, so you tell me. It's a platform. It's a platform where you can sign up. They offer it for men and women. And there, there's things like Trunk Club. There's Wantable in Milwaukee. Uh, you can let them know what you need. So you kind of go through a survey, type in all of your sizes. And then you say, hey, I need an outfit for, let's say, a wedding. Or I need something casual. Or I need to, an outfit for work. And a designer will come up with <laughs> come up with an outfit for you awesome. and you will get in stitch fix case five pieces delivered to your house so you try them on if you like them you'll keep them if you don't like them you send them back there's like a 20 dollars styling fee but i think i think it's worth it nice. and i now want to test out wantable which so you've got a styling fee but there's no restocking fee if you have to send stuff back no it's not they make that's cool uh, they actually make the deal so nice that you want to keep all the items <laughs> and, and so far like it, it's almost considered a data company not a clothing company because they really track well what things fit you well the last time and just send you the to me they always send me the perfect stuff that's cool and i mean i i as much as i talk about clothes like i mean most of my shopping is online i mean i'm I'll wait until I have, you know, like, right now it's underwear, but sometimes, like, I don't have jeans, and I have to do laundry because of jeans, you know, and I'm like, ah, i got to buy more mm -hmm. jeans. All right, Amazon.com, get me some jeans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. And maybe the, the other concept that I try to apply, it's called capsule wardrobe. Capsule so wardrobe. the goal is okay. to, yeah, have a minimum amount of pieces that can be mix and match with each other okay so you sort of, of alluded to this when you talked about dressing up or dressing down with the with the boots okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i <laughs> i think that happened after i watched i was always that way but then i watched this documentary about minimalism i'm like oh my god this is me i hate clutter like i hate having too much 
that I'm moving around. So I like to invest in, in a few good pieces in clothing or furniture. I get platinum all of my life. Um, so invest in a few pieces and then try to get the maximum wear out of them, mixing and matching it as much as possible. That's awesome. Well, I feel like I get that when I travel. So if I'm going to Africa or Europe or wherever, and I've got a backpack, you know, because I don't want to check luggage. I mean, I, it's, I, I try to exercise that. I'm like, how could I interchange this outfit? I guess I get spoiled mm -hmm. when I'm at home because I'm like, I have enough closet space to have so many outfits. And <laughs> I've, I've recently been going through and I'm like, I am, I'm never going to wear a purple shirt. Like, what am I doing with this thing? <laughs> it's got to go in the trash. But there was a time when I looked at it, I'm like, I Goodwill. could use a purple shirt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm not wearing something, I, I donated their like their goodwill and puffy sleeves. Like, what are you gonna do like with if that? somebody else can get some use out of it, uh, it it has to go. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other like? I, I just I enjoyed kind of hearing you talk about some of the fashion trends that are up now. Can you can you say any other ones? Like, do you, do you have any other examples besides the puffy or the long sleeves that are that are a little bit silly? <laughs> you know, I'm I'm still learning about some of them, and I'm not yeah. someone who always kind of chases the I don't know that stuff. but unfortunately skinny jeans are going out of style I've I heard that don't like the jeans. I, I am I'm wearing skinny mine. jeans right now they will be. <laughs> oh wow yep. but <laughs> I'll be wearing mine until they will be worn out I, I will not throw them away but I bought a pair uh, they have now mom jeans and even dad that's what jeans. I've heard is in is mom jeans so my I, I, like my mom told me that actually of you know to, to get meta with it, that skinny jeans were going out of style. I'm like, well, what should I wear then, mom? You know, <laughs> she's like, I don't know. I'm like, thanks for the advice. I really appreciate it. So I asked my friend Kristen, who seems to really be up on style. And um, she was like, mom jeans are in. I'm like, all right, where do I buy good mom jeans? <laughs> she was like, I don't know if it applies for dudes as well. <laughs> well, that's, 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 know, but, yeah, that's, that's what everybody in my life that I trust about fashion is telling me. I guess they're all women. So, you know, it's makes sense but you know um you know i asked Kristen, and she was like um i'll just plug it she said buy these rev town jeans you know and, and they're awesome i got these they're basically skinny jeans except they stretch that's the only difference mm -hmm. the fabric is stretchable yeah. and they're pretty they're pretty sweet and you go on the website and they're a little bit pricey uh i mean it gets not super but I, I paid like 80 bucks for a pair and i i mm -hmm. they're my favorite jeans i've got right now they're great and there was an agency yeah. used to work it was Another employee there created this jeans company, so it was kind of cool. Cool. If you're looking for more kind of casual, functional pants, um, there's a company in Chicago called Public Rec. Public Rec. So they make kind of sweat pants, but uh, that are stylish enough to wear. Are you serious? And this is okay. a game changer. Yeah, one of their designers is actually from Lululemon, so nice. Yeah, really good stuff. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna sound bad, but my, my brother, brother put a short uh, on Lululemon at the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he messed up. He researched 20 companies and he thought we were gonna do poorly. <laughs> oh my goodness. And he lost his shirt playing <laughs> against Lululemon. <laughs> oh, Lululemon did so well during the pandemic. Oh, yeah. People were valued more comfortable clothing and. I, we started working out from home more, so oh, yeah. their sales went up significantly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Much to my brother's dismay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd rather a company not go out of business or be hurting, so I'm, I'm happy about it. Ooh. Yeah, I started learning more about investing. I don't didn't get into shorting. I, I'm kind of, Me neither. I'm everyone should succeed. Way too scared to you do that. You should win and you should win. Well, yeah, and it seems douchey to, you know, like you're betting against or whatever, but, um, no, I'm with you. I, I, I much prefer to just buy regular stock. I don't do puts either. I mean, or calls, like, I, I just want to, you know, be a little more conservative with it. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like Dimitri is like yeah. a big investor. Um, like probably has been for a while, but we never talked about it because I never was into that when I was was living in Milwaukee. Um, how have you been getting into it? Like, what's your what's your entry point? 
So my, my story is um, I did not know anything when I came from Germany to the US, I did not know anything about saving and how does a 401k work and what is an IRA and all and of these sister. things. <laughs> so I did not know anything. Um, and I did not grow up in a family where my parents were really good at saving. Like they really like saved on, on themselves, did not consume much, but then tried to give as much as possible to the kids. Yeah. Um, but then I, when the pandemic hit and we missed the, like the stock market went down, like I decided like, okay, it's finally time to educate myself. So Me I too. bought mul multiple books nice. about, <laughs> about investing. One, one book that I would highly recommend is Tony Robbins. Tony when Robbins? Master the game. Oh, Tony, Tony Robbins. Robbins. Okay. I'm an idiot. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. When you master the Tony game. Robbins. Yeah. So he interviewed uh, different, like he provide his own advice. He's a very successful business owner and coach and like, he's just successful in so many areas of life. But what he did is he interviewed some of the best investors in the world, um, including Warren Buffett is one of the famous ones because he's so visible. But one that I admire the most is Ray Dalio. And I guess he, Ray Dalio learned like his lessons by losing a lot of money and he's like you cannot outperform the market <laughs> and like <his laughs> my dad strategy. told me that so many times when i started investing. he's like you're not smarter than the market you're not smarter than the market don't forget you're not smarter than the market <laughs> yeah yeah so i finally through the book learned what is a 401k what is an ira nice and uh like how do you allocate the money that you have in your 401k into like large cap, mid cap, small cap, diversify, not only throughout the classes, but also geographically. So I'm still not. Oh, that's interesting, actually. Perfect. Nobody is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still learning. I, and unfortunately, like we, we want to be a bit more active and read more, but we're always so busy trying to work on so many projects we have in the business. That, that makes sense to me. I, I feel like so. It used to be when I would drive like a long haul. So I define long haul as a five hour drive or more. And mm -hmm. um, when I would drive, usually in New York, I commute a lot because my, my family lives there. So my parents and some of my siblings. And um, so, um, you know, when I do that drive, I would listen to audiobooks and I would, I would get caught up and, and figure out some aspect of myself or something I want to learn about, you know, and I would get an audiobook about that and, and listen to mm -hmm. it. But now, yeah. you know, <laughs> I say now, it's been like the last four years or so. I, I'm just, I'm so inundated that what I'll do is I'll just, I'll, I'll be on calls the entire time. I'll put a list together of people mm -hmm. I need to get in touch with. It'll be sales. Sometimes it's, um, it's internal. So, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. project management. You know, I got to touch yeah. base with this person, this person, this person. Yeah. Or maybe it's, but you, you could know, take, human I resources. Think... Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. You're, you're hustling. But you could, I you. think it's important to all allocate some time for, for reading physically, or if you can't do that, like I, I would love to listen to books when I'm cooking. I love to cook and I know that you're a really good cook. Yeah. Well, when as you lived in Milwaukee, you, you had to I mean, go you've... for some amazing. Yeah. But you, what did, uh, what did you make that was really good? There was, there was some was garlic and mayonnaise rolled into an endive, I think. With... Oh my God. It's almost oh. embarrassing. It's such a simple recipe. It was Napa so good. Though. I, I, yeah, yeah, Napa cabbage. It was it was delicious. It was it was it was simple AF, but it was it was really 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 good. And I I, I, know, I admire that kind of cook because it's oh thank you. It's, it's I, easy I to, to make like a your... filet mignon takes good or whatever. Uh -huh. it, it takes more skill to be like here's something I can get for fifty cents and it's gonna be fucking delicious. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's super simple. It's almost embarrassing. I tried to recreate your Thai curry, which yeah. was memorable. Thank you. I, I'm not as good. You're really I, good I could probably give you some tips if you want. <laughs> get on the phone sometime when you're cooking. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get your recipe. I've, I've, I've had other people um, that I'm good friends with that will just call me when they cook. <laughs> I'm always happy to help. Yeah. So that's a time when you could be listening to more books um, about investing or whatever else you have on your list. How long are you in the kitchen though? Cause I feel like I'm, I'm only in there for like 
20 minutes maybe if I'm if I'm making a meal maybe maybe a little more if it's like a complicated meal but I don't know that that's enough time to really get like I want like a, an hour or three like just to really mm -hmm. kind of yeah no, sometimes I cook for for an hour depending on the recipe I try to create sometimes for me cooking is very therapeutic same so I love to recreate some German recipes or recipes from Kazakhstan. So they, cool. those take a bit of time. I don't cook every single day, but maybe three, four times a week. I will say one of the things I, I really enjoyed in the pandemic is that I started cooking more. Um, I always used to, you know, it's not an excuse. If you're, if you're very busy and you're making complex meals and you don't want to compromise quality, then I mean, sometimes you need to order food or, or go to a restaurant in order to meet the demands of your job. And you're certainly that. And so I, I don't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fold anybody for that. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I found I was making excuses. I, I was saying I was busy when really like, all right, I've got, you know, 30 minutes to, to make something. or And then sometimes, you know, I, I found like, all right, I'm going to microwave this is bad. I started getting these chicken skewers from Costco, and I'm like, I'm gonna microwave these guys. I'm gonna get them good in microwave. While the microwave is running, I'll have my cast iron skillet heating up, and then I'll throw the the chicken skewers in the skillet. I'll get them nice and nice and toasty on either side. Mm -hmm. Throw them on a bunch of paper towels, drain off the grease, and then I mean, it's deli oh, I'm such a fat guy. I'll put sriracha <laughs> mayo on it, <laughs> and then eat it. <laughs> Oh my but, um, yeah. but it's understandable like when you don't have the time because when we launched the business like in, in the beginning we worked seven days a week and so nice. you've stopped, you've I, been able to I cut that back <laughs> yeah so when we worked seven days a week we would get meals from it's not quite uh what is the cheap noodle dish that certain people used to eat ramen uh, ramen i i we we listen to so many podcasts and sometimes founders say we eat we ate ramen all the time we did not eat ramen, what's his dick was a big fan ramen. of that uh guy guy whatever the fuck art of the start guy you know what i'm talking about guy kowalski kowalski kawasaki mm -hmm. kawasaki there's so there are so many like <laughs> people especially founders who were in a budget eating eating that we would go to trader joe's and eat get a bunch of frozen meals Nice. And we would eat the, they have amazing Indian dishes. So that's what we I agree. would hang out at a co-working space here in Milwaukee called Ward 4. Nice. And I get there in the morning, st stay until it would get dark and would eat our frozen Trader Joe's. <laughs> 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 I hope people didn't hate us because it like, had a really strong smell, but it was I mean, delicious. You're never getting around that with Indian spices, but you know, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, there's, um, I, I, remind me after, I, there's a stand-up comedy bit about Trader Joe's I'll have to send you. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, cool. Um, I guess that's, honestly, that's like, that's so real. I mean, I, just, I think anybody that's had a product startup or, or just a startup in general, even if it's service, like, like I do, has experienced that where, you know, you, you're hustling to make it work. I mean, you have to, you grind, I mean, you're you're fighting a market that wants you to die. <laughs> I don't know if that's, I mean, it's a little melodramatic, but you know what I mean? Like uh, the odds are not in your favor. And so if, if you don't work your ass off in an intelligent way, you're going to fail. Um, yeah. What were, what were some of the lessons you learned, I guess, when you were getting started? Like, I guess in terms of like work habits or, or just strategy and business that that's kind of serving you today that you had to learn just by getting yeah. punched in the chin a little bit. Yeah. I, th I think once one thing every uh, startup founder needs to learn is like completely redefining failure because if you're afraid to fail, it's not very healthy. Uh, like in the beginning, I had this feeling like, oh my god! Like especially the day when we launched, kind of launched the website and pressed the kind of the button on the website and started selling and sent out the press release. I was so <laughs> terrified. And I'm like, oh my god! Now my pictures and then in the news and we we're actually officially launched and i was so afraid of like oh my god what if our customers will hate hate our boots and what will people think if we fail and you have to completely kind of 
get away from that and because it's just as you're doing something completely new there will be a time when you run into an issue when you'll fail at something it's so important to get back up learn as much as possible from your mistakes and keep moving so i think that was a huge lesson learned and then when it, it another was, thing is i'm oh, sorry yeah. I, I was just gonna say my, my ego made it really difficult for me to pick up that lesson as well where i I mean, I, I've spent time when I've incurred credit card debt with businesses I've started just trying to keep up appearances where it was a stupid idea and, I don't know, ego got to go. <laughs> so I'm glad mm -hmm. you brought that oh, one yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Like, you, ego really has to go. And then you have to, every person is different and you have to kind of listen to your own body and figure out how much, how many days a week you can work. In the beginning, we worked like nonstop every single day. And I realized that over time, like your productivity goes down. If you don't allow yourself, give yourself a break. And some people are fine taking, let's say, a couple of days during a weekday off. I needed to have at least a day when I give myself the permission not to work. And nice. Because the problem is that work never stops. Like it doesn't matter <laughs> what you're day right. it is. Your, your inbox keeps filling up. There's always like, going to be another email the, answer. There's never a point where you're like, okay, I'm done with everything. And now I can relax. Like you have to force it. I find it four a.m. Zero inbox. About an hour. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> no. Yeah. So yeah, everyone has to figure out for themselves how much, um, how much you can work and like what do you need to keep to stay creative because it's so important to keep coming up with new ideas. You have to give your brain some, some time to recharge and to keep think, thinking creatively. And then Let's... I think super important is to have a good morning routine. Okay. I used to wake up in the morning, grab my phone, and usually the first sentence of my day was, oh shit, because you look, <laughs> you look at an email or you look at social media and there would be always a message that would say like, oh my God, I forgot to send out the thing or someone's like, I hate your boots. You will always have someone who does not like the design or whatever. Yeah. So it's not healthy to start your day looking at your phone because then you're in this reactive mode. I'm glad you're bringing this up and because this is how I start my day. I, I go on the toilet oh. with my phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I need to hear this. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. And I read, I read different, uh, I read like about Oprah's morning routine and Tony Robbins and, uh, like so so many successful business people richard branson like all the successful yeah. business people um a couple of presidents richard they Branson's take some time guy. in the morning oh my god they just had the flight um this weekend uh to space which yeah is freaking exciting suborbital yeah, was... actual orbital like where did where did they go do you remember i i uh... haven't been following it i since i worked at space like i've been kind of burned out on space <laughs> More than I should be. You should you should check it out. Um, don't know the exact definition, but it was uh, all over the news. That's cool. Okay. So no, but he's overall a really cool guy. He dropped out of school and like the the amazing companies that he has built with the amazing customer experience. It's so so freaking impressive. I had a client who was a who was a Teal Fellow uh, through SKA, and uh, do, are you familiar with the Teal Fellowship program? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's where weird. he encourages kids to drop out of yeah. college, gives them some money. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's cool. It was but neat. I, I mean, just that. I um, I think he's going to be in the podcast. I called him uh, Peter. I said, uh, "How's your sugar daddy?" <laughs> Peter. Peter. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Well, so, uh, going back to the morning routine. So it's so important to take some time for yourself in the morning. It is depending on. Some people like to meditate. To be honest, I never really got into meditation. I know it's effective for so many people, but I have a hard Same. time sitting and meditating. I'm just too scatterbrained. But what I do is like we work out for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Nice. Or I go for a long walk. That helps. And it, yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's helpful. It's either either work out or walk and keep it simple because that way you will not have an excuse not to do it. It doesn't have to be this intense one to two hour <laughs> crazy workout with tools. You just start a YouTube video. We're actually right now watching them. Um, uh, we're subscribed to this Austrian girl who's just kicking our asses every morning. <laughs> <laughs> She's really good. Um, and 
Nice. Yeah, just take some time for yourself. Um, then I make my the Austrians. coffee. <laughs> Uh, Think of Schwarzenegger. Like, take I mean, a shower, so. make my coffee. Yeah, Schwarzenegger. Yeah, exactly. He's he's been he's amazing. Yeah, I'm career. a bunch of people. Yeah, way, it's only way that kind of. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm sorry start to talk over you. So coffee, positive. shower, workout, start the day effective. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. Start the day with a positive attitude. It makes sense. I I do feel like my endurance for work is better when I work out. All right. Well, I think that's a good note to end on. I mean, it's, it's something people can use, take with them. Uh, Anna, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Is there anything you want to plug that you've got going on right now before we call it? Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Stay tuned for more product updates or ge gearing up for yeah. fall lo product launches. Blazers Love only the you. start, plenty of uh, only the second, <laughs> plenty of yeah, cool stuff yeah. coming from Xena Workwear. <laughs> And yeah, I thank you so much for coming on. Coming. More safety yeah, shoes? Of course. No, this was fun. Yeah, more safety shoes, more work. Where if, if you want to do it again, I mean, I feel like we were a little bit all over the map, but I, I would love to have you on again. This was this was fun. It, it it was really fun. It was less structured. I almost felt like uh, <laughs> sounded like a Joe Rogan podcast where it just goes into so a million different directions. That's my Most muse. Of my podcasts are very <laughs> structured. It's like okay, business. Uh, how did you move? So, uh, but I think it was fun. We I, I look up to Joe Rogan a lot. We we just tried to rearrange the studio based on a guest we had that was on Rogan before uh, coming on this podcast, and uh, it didn't work for our space. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, no, there he has a lot of good guests. I, I may not agree with everything and everyone who is on it, but I think it's a yeah. really cool platform. That's what I like about it. it. I mean, there's people I see on there that I don't like either, right? Where I'm like, this person's a scumbag. <laughs> <At the same time. laughs> I like that he has them on. Like the, the impartiality of it, I mean, it is, is pretty cool to me. So mm -hmm. I respect that at least. You know? Yeah, for sure. Cool. So this was fun. It was yeah. nice catching up with Anna, you. thanks for coming on. We'll Good do it again soon. Everything. You too. Yeah, uh, you're so killing cool. it, obviously, and I mean, I'm sure you'll continue to do so. Uh, this is really fun. Right. If you stuck around this long and you like what you've heard, please give us a like and smash that subscribe button. Or smash that like button and give us a subscribe. We're always looking for new and interesting people to have on the show. If you know anyone good, send an email to podcast at ska.solutions or leave a comment below. Thanks again for listening, and please come to the next one.